I think, what the Warrington Wolves are made of, especially in the opening stages, the first ten minutes, maybe, yeah. of the second oh. half. Well, they nearly started with a shock of them and some strong defence here from Salford, but you can bet your bottom dollar this Warrington side is going to go after... Going to go after Salford, but Salford nice and tight, working together. It's an important next 15 minutes or so for Salford, if they can contain... You know, there's no, there's no doubt about it, there'll be a reaction from Warrington, there has to be, if they're going to go and show this crowd what they're made of in 2023, but for Salford, if they can contain them, and when I mean contain, I don't mean go into the shell and stop playing. I mean, keep bringing the standards that they brought to this game, tighten up that rook defence, and it should see them get the win here. But Warrington will have a say in it. Well, two brilliant performances to start the season from Warrington. But they were taught a harsh lesson, for sure, by Salford in that opening half. On the last, Williams gets away a really high hanging kick and it bounces awkwardly, it bounces backwards, it, it's still the last and Williams, will he, will he try and run it here? He will and uh, it may well have come off the hand of Lafay, it did come off the hand of Lafay, now it's with Fulis, so a bit of luck there for uh, Warrington and then a high tackle, I think it was Longstaff on Fulis, I don't think it was, well it was a, it was careless, it wasn't intentional, but Fulis will get up, he's okay, Lockstaff gives away the penalty, and maybe that's a little bit of luck that they needed. On the last, the long pass out for Williams. Lafay got a fingertip to it, and then they get the penalty. Well, it was a very scruffy end to the set, wasn't it? It finds its hand, the ball finds its hands in Williams, who, who tries to go at that space. Tim Lafay's caught in no man's land. And that penalty there that Ellis Longstaff, I don't believe he intentionally gave that away, no. but what it does is it allows Salford to reset, refocus and deal with the next part of Warrington's play. Well, important moments. Important moments for sure. I think the word you used to me during half-time, Cherry, is that, is that Warrington are going to try and ambush Salford in this opening ten minutes. It's a very good description. First chance to attack, Williams with a long looping pass out for Matty Ashton! And if he scored, that's a magnificent try, it's a leap, it's a jump, and he backs Tackle the ball two, down. But has he managed try. to stay Tim in the field of play? Goal, Jack Smith thinks so, he thinks Warrington has scored. Tackle Liam Moore right. will have the definitive decision. It's tackled two, and we've got a live decision of a try. I'm looking at the touch line and groaning, please. Best available angles. So he's in possession here, Ashton. Still in possession. Legs are in there at this point. Still in the air. Oh, Ball's yeah. grounded. Thank you. I made my decision. What a try. What a winger's yeah, try. Man. What a classy try. And what an important try for Matthew Ashton. Well, he needed it, didn't he, if this goes right? Yes, it does. The first points in the second half. Go to the Warrington side in the class act. Two tries last week, Matty Ashton. And he certainly knows how to finish. In a tight little corner like that, you can see that that ball, again, from George Williams, played through one of them in the first half. It led to an intercept from Ken Seal, which led to a try. He's not afraid. Good players aren't afraid to make that play again. It would have been easier for George Williams to tip it on, but he saw that Matty Ashton was hugging that touchline in a bit of space. He knows what the, the powerful winger has got in his armory. And that try, well, we all expected it early on in the second half. It's a perfect start for Warrington in the second half. Paul Rowley, well, he mentioned in his little piece there that he jumped on the microphone that he was disappointed with the number of penalties that they conceded in the first half. And we will back at it again, that Ellis Longstaff penalty, tackle five. Here it comes, boys. Ratchford, is he going to maintain his 100% record with the boot? That's unlucky. It's off the post. But Warrington are right back in this. The deficit now, just 10 points, and uh, we're able to speak now to the, the Wolves' assistant coach, Ryan Sheridan. Um, I'm sure that Daryl Powell has said you need a strong start to the second half. Well, that's ex exactly what you've got, Ryan. Yeah, we definitely need to reset and start again. Um, 
obviously we didn't start the first half all too well. Um, definitely need to defend better. And obviously the start to the second half has been great for us. I think it's fair to say that after the brilliant start you've made to this season, you're behind the eight ball and we're going to see a bit more about, about Warrington are made of. Yeah, it's a definite test for us. You know, Saul for a good side, the challenge with the ball. It's up for us to build a game, show some composure, start building some sets, create a bit more pressure on Salford, but not chase the game. Real pressure with what we do, but we started that second half really well. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. Well, he's right, isn't he? Yeah. They, they've got to take the game. Yeah, they certainly have. They've opened them up a couple of times early on, just through them in and around the rocks. They're just starting to win that rock recognition back into the contra back into control of the side. A kick from Williams, a high one to that left-hand side of the field. It's another really good kick now. I think it might have gone forward. It did go forward. It did go forward. It think, I think it came off Dion Cross forward. And that may well be another stroke of luck, but a stroke of skill as well from the from the kick. And Warrington are gonna get the ball back. Yeah, you know, they get down here on the on the back of playing off a bit of power from the two front rowers. And then they shift it out wide, then they come up with a decent kick. Take two meters on the back of scoring some points. Just breaking the game down nice and easy. Well, Joe Bullock and Sam Cassiano doing what they're supposed to do and just carting that ball forward, generating rook speed that allows George Williams all the time in the world to put a kick in. Here is Duffy, always dangerous from a set play, isn't he? From a set piece and yeah. so quick. One of the times that we've seen Matt Duffy score tries in the NRL, especially in his career at the Dragons. Frank Carney said at half time that whatever happens, we're gonna we're gonna have a story, and we are gonna have a story. That's nice line speed by Ollie Partington to stop Joe Bullock in his tracks. Former teammates, of course, at Wigan. The jump from Daryl Clark. And that's what you get when you have Daryl Clark backing in at loose forward and Danny Walker at hooker. That Made speed, that speed and agility. It's made a difference, hasn't it? And this man always makes a difference. Big Sam, right in front of the post. Walker, they switch direction. Drink water now, and Matautia wriggles past the couple. Can't offload. This is the last one. Huge play, this, at the start of the second half. Drink water, arrows the kick. He did that come off a Salford player? It may well have done. Ashton dives through. Has Ashton got over? No, he's held up over the line. What a defensive play that was. Briley was there, but it was Brody Croft underneath the scrum. It was Croft who saved the try. That is exceptional play there from Brody Croft, the man of steel last season. Puts his body on the line, gets underneath that ball, and saves his side. What would have been a certain try against them. Yep. They get another set because the kick from Drinkwater came off a Salford hand, didn't it? And now they've got a penalty in front of the post for offside. Everything that could go right for Warrington at the start of this second half is, at the moment, everything that could go wrong for Salford has. And here is Cassiano now playing his 250th career game. Big Sam Cassiano for Warrington tonight. Walker at dummy half. They got one try back at the start of this second half. They're hungry for more. Curry, who got the first try of the night after eight minutes. It seems an age ago. It was an age ago. Ratchford at dummy half. Here comes the play again with Clark and Cassiano. A huge set, this. They go the short side. It's Bullock. Bullock for the line. He bangs into the post. The six again was called as well there, Pikey. It is, it's another set. Chipped on there towards Ratchford. Well, that's good line speed, isn't it? On the line of defence, weren't they? The old cross it was. But this is set after a set after set, and it's tackle after tackle, and at the moment, Salford repelling the Warrington Wolves. Walker, without a doubt, was made a difference. Now Drinkwater, with a little dummy Drinkwater, and it was well read in the end, had to be by Longstaff. Matautia, that's a loose pass, though. Here is Williams. One-handed now, a little back pass to... An opportunity once more. Minikin brought down, right in front of the post. Last tackle. 
Can Salford hold out? Drink water. Go towards the corner. Oh, and it's Briley who manages to take the pass in the air. And I'll tell you what, that brave, brave and brilliant defending from Salford. It's massive, massive nearly, what, nine minutes in the second half. They've been absolutely under the pump, conceded a try. But you imagine being a, a Salford red player, being under that much pressure, Warrington throwing everything at them. That will only be good for the confidence in those red shirts. Well, let me tell you something. If, if, if Salford, sorry, if they go on to win this game, I have no doubt that that nine-minute period will feature heavily in in the Salford Red Devils video. Everybody turning up, even when they looked like they were stretched, there was just red shirts turning up time and time again to turn Warrington away. Exceptional stuff. Well, it, it, it's been it's been a six again. It's been a dropout. It's been a penalty. It's been. Back-to-back -back sets, it's been everything from Warrington. Well, it's easy, just like from, sorry, from Salford's point of view, getting stuck in, communicating on your line, making sure that you're doing the right thing by the man who's defending either side of you. Warrington is certainly trying to up the speed of this game now. When you're able to keep turning sides away, when they've got that much possession on your line, it certainly builds trust in the... within each other, sorry. That togetherness, that connectivity in defence. Salford really are on the back foot. Vaughan, and I just can't stop him when he's, he's in the mood. He makes metre after metre after metre. Cross in, tackle four. Williams now with a little kick through. The ball might well have. I was say, did the ball go backwards or did it go yeah, forwards? Yeah, the ball, the ball was not backwards. Even though the player ended up behind the ball, the ball was initially not back. Matt Duffy had called for that kick then from Williams. It was great recognition from Ellis Longstaff. There's another player in there as well that, that realised that Matt Dufty has flattened up. And I think it's there, it's Peter Metalti who just jumps the gun. That's not what you need. The kick through from Williams was almost perfect again. Dufty, Longstaff, Sneed, them two recognise it and just defuse that play. Darrell Powell frustrated. Ah, who'd be a coach? I've always said it's the worst job coach? in the world. Well. What a moment it's going to be for Paul Wellens. Hometown boy, hometown hero, hometown coach. His first game in charge, a grand final repeat. Almost a sellout, Saints against Leeds, live on Sky Sports Friday night. What a game that will be, and what a game this is turning out to be. And first time really with ball in hand. They made them shifts look so easy, yeah, don't they? I was just going to say, you think about all the work that they've had to do without the ball. They look, they look so fit, don't they? Ackers. One staff. First time with the ball inside the Warrington half in the second half. It's taken 11 minutes. Well, King Bruni, They've got a penalty. They've got a relieving penalty. And again, you'll, you'll take the two points here of Max Need saying he wants to keep on going. Yeah, Max Need feeling like they're in the yeah. mood. They've just got back into it. They've and absorbed that, that pressure. They want to keep playing. And that's it. Well, you back your players. Your players feel where they are on the pitch and yeah, what they want to do. Mark Sneed, I think Mark Sneed's won the argument, but Paul Rowley's won the argument. Paul, Paul Rowley's the one who's won it because he, let me tell you, Mark Sneed, he wanted to keep going. He, he circled the hands around to the sideline saying, no, I want to keep going. Feel like we've got him here. They just brought King Rooney Ayawa onto the field to add a bit of oomph, add a bit of speed in the middle of the park. I think it's Ollie Partington that's left the field after 52 minutes and what a 52 minutes he's had. But Paul Rowley, intent on using King Vuniyawa as an impact player and that's why it's taken until 52 minutes for us to see him and well we saw he was brilliant in the World Cup there the four he games was. he played for Fiji had a quality game as well in the quarter-final over at Hull FC and Fiji almost pushed New Zealand all the way the giant Fijian He was one of the giant goal kickers in this, not just in the present day, but in the Super League era. Yeah. In, into sixth place, as he knows, sixth place in the all time goal kicking charts. Big kick for Sneed. Well, he's missed yeah, it. He put the curse on. Well, you don't see that very often from that sort of distance. Mark Sneed missing the goal. Well, he didn't want to kick it anywhere. He wanted to keep attacking, so he's going to get his wish here. Just wasted a bit of time. And we'll see now what Mark Sneed can conjure up in this next set of six. 
Well, I'm sure it's not the last we've seen of Ollie Partington as well as the man who's replaced him onto the field. Yeah, here is the king, the Fijian. Just wondering, let's make a little note there. 53 minutes, Mark Sneed penalty miss. How important that may prove to be at the end of the game. We shall see. Here's Ryan Bryan, one of the, the Salford try scorers in that fabulous first half. Already nearly 15 minutes gone in the in the second half. Time flies, doesn't it? Here's Auburn Royd. Back on the field, another one who signed a, a new contract in recent times, Jack Auburn Royd. Briley, long staff, it yeah. looked forward, and it is forward. Yeah, that ball was wasted it. opportunity, Briley penalised for a forward pass, and Warrington will get it back. He plays that again in his mind, and that, this ball's out the back to Tim Lafayette. Well, Greg Minikin, well, he was caught in two minds. It could have been a two-on-one then with Foolish. You can see him just backing off and backing off. Huge wow. overlap, there was a, if that had come out to the left-hand side. Well, I'm going to be quite critical there of Ellis Longstaff. He's detailed, he needs to be half a yard deeper. He, all, he overruns the play. Yes, Briley shouldn't have thrown it. Your attention to detail has got to be, you know, it's so important, as particularly when you've hardly seen the ball. I think the one thing that, that, that Salford really want to, to do and, and to prove to people around Super League as Ratchford tries to break and, and finds Matthew Ashton is that, that that tag of always, certainly in the last few years, punching above their weight getting to a grand final, getting to a Challenge Cup final, nearly getting to another grand final. They want to establish themselves yeah. as, a, as a main threat, you know, a big player in the big league here uh, in the UK in Super League, and not just a team that, that is put together and, and overachieved. Hey, but to be fair to them, what they've managed to do is, is got a bit of stability the next few years, managed to keep hold of yep. some of the star names that they can add to. Right, Joe Burgess, Ackers. Both signed up, and of course, Brody Croft, that eight-year deal, it was announced a couple of weeks ago. Clark, drink water, we will have to take the tackle there. 55 minutes gone, last tackle, ten points in it. And there is Williams with a high kick, and that may well have come off a... A Warrington player anyway, but I think may well have been offside. Yeah, they were offside. They were. Yeah, it was Thomas Michaleli. Well, he's deemed to be offside as the ball's kicked. He's in front of George Williams, and when the catcher goes to take it, he's deemed inside the tent. You and that is a detailed penalty. You can't blame the referee. The referee, Jack Smith, was calling him, saying that he's offside here. So you get them where you want them. And all of a sudden, you relieve that pressure by a penalty where it's just not working yeah. and listening to the referee. Just fresh back onto the field well, Terry, as well. Terry and, and, and Carl were mentioning that they hope that they see Ollie Partington First, back in business in the, in the last 25 minutes. There he is. Let's get news from Jenna. Yeah, high praise up there for Ollie Partington. He played 50 odd minutes. He's the top tackler out there with 34. He's also made two offloads. He has run his heart out uh, tonight. I don't know, maybe we should start calling him the flying mullet. <laughs> I'd love to see my colleagues here with a mullet. <laughs> I don't think they have enough hair. Good kick forward, charges on, Fulis. Wow, what about that for a play? He gets it back to Dufty. That was ambitious, that was brave, it worked. Well, that's energy and effort from both sides. First of all, Salford putting pressure on Dufty, then Dufty getting back in the field and making 18 metres, because he was certainly under some pressure. Oh, Look at this. A play. A high risk play. They get away with it. It looks good when it comes off. Well, it came off certainly for the yeah. men, didn't it? Your heart's in your mouth if you're on the coaching staff, that's for sure. The six again given away. Oh, Just, and that's poor, isn't it? The third player, they've managed to restrict them to, what, 20 metres? Set restarts away. They've given some set restarts away. Here's a question for you. Have they weathered the storm? Well, they have done, but they're starting to miss some tackles as well yeah. now, so they're falling off some tackles, which they weren't doing that in the first half. I don't think Salford can keep playing the way they are at the moment and see this game out. I think if they carry on with the way they're going, there's certainly more than 10 points left in this Warrington outfit. And here we go. Well, chance now, but Tauti have got to port. Ball inside. Drinkwater brought down, Walker again. Yeah, it's got to go back to worse. It's going to be 
in the right Yeah. Now, this is a massive 10 minutes, ten minutes first. Call for Jack Smith. His patience has run out. Ryan Friday can argue all he likes, but the decision has been made. Well, we mentioned 16 penalties. Sorry, Tez, last week. And I've lost track now of how many penalties they've given away inside three quarters of a game. But it's far too many. And Jack Smith in the end says, I've seen enough. And sends Ryan Bradley to the bin all over George Williams trying to slow the play down. Well, he's just looking about what's in front of him. He's looking at the red shirts in front, knowing that they've got to get behind him. They've been brought, they're under pressure. Well, they're certainly under the pump now. Paul Rawley, Kurt Haggerty, no. They're without that man at the back directing what's in front of him. It disrupts the team, moves somebody else out of position. And they've got it all to do now. Well, they have got it all to do, and here is... First, Thomas McKay. Go on. McKayley plays the ball quickly. Here is Paul Vaughan. Vaughan charging for the line, and Lomsap and Sneed wrestling back. Salford down to 12. Well, that may well be offside again. Well, they've got to be careful. Well, Max, they're just reaching around and saying they're pulled on his arm, but you've got to make sure you're still onside. Another penalty. Penalty count 7 4 now in Warrington's favour, but at the moment we feel that Salford could be masters of their own downfall. They don't get their, their act together as far as the discipline is concerned. Here is Vaughan again. Well, they were playing without a fullback then since Mark has gone off. The physio's just come on now and told that Joe Burgess, he's got to go to fullback. It's going to make no difference at all whether he's a fullback or not. Because Thomas McKayley goes under the post for a try. And Warrington a bang back in this game. Jack Smith wants confirmation. So we will have the video ref. And tonight, that's Liam Moore. It's tackle one, and the live decision is a, is a try. We're just looking at the ground in place. Best available angle. So he's in possession at this point. Lose sight of the ball in that one. Is there any other angle maybe behind the sticks that might show me in maintain possession? So he's in possession at this point, established that on the previous clip. His hand appears to be on the ball. Is there any other angles or that might help me? Still have hands on the ball there, and I can see it touch the line. Thank you. I made my decision. Well, the decision has been made, and the decision is... Another try for Warrington. Down to 12 men, giving away penalties, giving away silly penalties. Ryan Briley in the sin bin. Thomas McKayley gets the try. Stefan Ratchford adds the goal. And all of a sudden, with an hour gone, this thrill a minute ride is going to get even rockier. 20 points to 16. Salford's lead is down to four. Yeah, well, it was just too much in the end. Penalties, penalties, losing rooks over a period of time. Thomas Michelele just carrying the ball hard and direct, threatening the space. Too big, too strong. And he gets over for a vital score. It's a four-point ball game now as we head into the last 20 minutes. Well, Ryan Hall, who, of course, uh, OKR beat Salford last week. Great game. Yeah, yeah. Keep in touch. Sky Sports RL on Twitter. Hashtag Sky Sports RL. We agree with Ryan Hall. We concur with the veteran <laughs> winger. No, a different Warrington now. And you know, you've got McKayley here pushing up with Paul Vaughan, explosive player. You can look at his stats back in the NRL. 66 games, never scored two two tries. He scored in Super League in 14 appearances. Oh, wow. Wow. The dummy from Cork, he's got to pull. Dusty, Dusty knocks on. Would you believe it? He is one of the best supporting players. Dusty catches it. It's a strolling, it's a try, and Warrington would lead. What a moment. Absolutely, look, this is a chance that's gone missing. But Daryl Powell will be sat up there in the coach's box, at least thinking, look, we are making breaks, we are creating opportunities. They haven't missed a tackle in this second half. The Warrington fans can't believe it that Dufty dropped it. 
but they're still getting into try scoring positions to score. They just at the minute seem to be playing at a different level, a different speed. And well, they, they put the foot on the accelerator. Well, they are because they've had all the ball, Ted. It's that simple. Warrington haven't had any say in this half whatsoever. A set restart for Salford. Just going back to that break, Daryl Clark made. That left edge of Salford's defence was awful. Gets through far too easy. And on another day, Matt Dufty, nine times out of ten, catches that, scores under the post, and it, we're looking at a 22 point. Yeah. I think 20 more, game. More, more like 49 times out of 50, Carl. Yeah. What an important moment that is. Is that a, a game changing moment? We'll find out over the next 18 minutes or so. Salford down to 12. Sneed with a little kick towards the corner. That's just, well, that just the, the, the voice of the head of experience yeah. from Mark Sneed. Just, well, just calm it down, just slow it down. That was, that was smart. Well, that's what he's paid for to manage games in these situations, knowing that you're numerical advantage down you've got to come up with the players you've got to make sure you lead from the front kicking the ball off the field will just let that clock tick down it's not only that the piece that's in the bin is there one of their main attacking threats in briley so by putting the ball in and chewing that meters down sorry chewing the time down they know that when the next time they get the ball back having briley back just gives them another option another point of attack well so let me just give you an idea so they hardly have the ball have they in the center half Tackles made, Warrington 182, Salford approaching 270 tackles. A lot of them have been in this second half. And as a result, that's why the scoreboard has now ticked over in the fashion that it has. Three, move Callum! Oh, that rhyme, bro. I oh, think the referee just ran out of patience, didn't he? Jack Smith with the sim bin. That was just one discretion four. too many. Ryan Briley has still got around five minutes to go in the sim bin, and here they come again with Curry and Ratford with the ball out to Ashton. Cuts inside. Can he find some space? Matty Ashton, brilliant off road again. Williams, charge to the corner. Hewitt oh. with the try. What a brilliant Warrington Wolves try. Josh Stewless with the score. We have a level game. And that sim bidding is costing Salford and how. And they're beginning to get frustrated. More and more frustrated. After, after the try. And it's 20 all. We know for sure that Fulis has leveled this match. Well, it's just like a tidal wave, isn't it? The minute. He's had a hand in most things, George Williams, and he kicks that ball to perfection to Josh through this I think's one of those tough players. Well, hang on, hang on, Terry. Check for the match of an eight-point try. He's he's just going to have please. a look here. Jack Smith, I thought he'd given the try. He hasn't. Is it going to be for an eight-point try? I think Liam Moore is going to have a look at this. Got it, mate. Yeah, mate. Tackle four, the live decision is a try, and we're checking the merits of an eight-point try. Can I first check the onside from the kick, please, as part of the process? Just to confirm, the chaser is onside from the initial kick. So, onside from the kick. He's been called onside live by the touch as well, so we're um, continuing at this point. It's all on the grounding now. So, waiting for him to ground the ball. Fulis grounds the ball there. At what point does it come in? So we've got slow on this, please, again. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, the ball's grounded there, and you can see Dupree slide in with the knees. Yeah, the, the try's been scored, and that is foul play. It leads with the knees making contact with Fulis. So it's going to be a try, but it's also going to be an eight-point try for the foul play by Dupree. Thank you. I've made my decision. Well, this is a big call, not just from Jack Smith, but from the video referee, Liam Moore. It's a try, for sure. Is it an eight-point try? It is. It's a try. Eight-point try confirmed by Liam Moore. And 
confirmed by Jack Smith. What a big moment in this game. They were 20 points to six behind, and now they're going to be in front. Well, it's just a brain explosion. We, we bigged him up, didn't we, Tyler Dupree? The word that he was doing, carrying the ball and taking the battle to the to the big middleman in a Warrington jersey. And he's just let his side down there. You know the drill, mate. One from here, one from in front of the post, yeah. It was a fantastic try, though, wasn't it? Seven, seventh try of the night, and probably the pick of them all. The skill started off with that man there, Ratchford. He's in and away to release his winger, Matty Ashnew, keeps the ball alive, gets an offload away to George Williams. George Williams has a look up, and the space is all in that bottom right-hand corner. Puts a gorgeous kick in. Question marks over whether Fulis was onside. The live call was he was OK. So it matters not. And Ratchford here to put Warrington ahead for the first time since minute eight of this game. And there's Ryan Briley. Sinbin looking absolutely distraught because all this has happened since he's been off the pitch. Two tries for Warrington. Oh. Oh. Well, it, incredible, incredible. He's missed the conversion. Oh. He's going to get another chance for an eight-point try. So he's going to get a kick from in front of the post now, so it'll still only be a six-point try. Well, they're just a team that like to offload, aren't they? Pull in defenders, give the ball to somebody who's in a, a better position. They seem to be running red hot all of a sudden, and the game's all about options. And what options has George Williams got? Well, he's got that man out wide. And Josh Fulis, well, doesn't make a mistake from there, and neither does Stefan Ratch for the second time around. But there it is. Warrington to do go ahead. They should be four points ahead. An astonishing miss that by Stefan Ratchford. But this is the mistake from young Tyler Dupree, which led to a fracas, which led to an eight-point try, which led to Salford being behind. Do you know what? It, like, Daryl Powell, when he looks back and reviews this game, Salford were the better team in the first half. And I think Warrington have had to show some character. They've not had it all their own way in this game, obviously. They've had it in the, all their own way the majority of the first two games that they played, but they've had to do it tough in this game. But they haven't had the ball, as I mentioned. They, they hardly have the ball in this second half. And, and there that's is Ryan Briley. He'll be back on in about two minutes to go. That's a good Ryan Briley just taking his tracksuit top off. We asked the question at the start of the second half, didn't we? We'll find out a bit more about Warrington and what they're made of. Well, it's a I combination they, of they've a few shouted things. it from the rooftop so far. Here is Minikin. Can they get another score on the board before Briley's back and Salford are restored to a full complement of 13? Matautia down the middle on the last. Salford just desperate, I'm sure, to get their hands on the ball as Williams goes high again and Ken Seo takes it well. And that just relief. And I think Paul Rowley, the message from Salford, you know, there's still 13 minutes to go, and we're only two points behind, and we're going to have a chance at some stage, surely. Yeah, but just over 100 more tackles made. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, is that a mistake? It is another mistake. The NRL is back with Penrith against Brisbane, and then the Dolphins against the Roosters this weekend. Tomorrow... And then on Sunday, up early, kettle on for the Dolphins' debut in the NRL on Sky Sports Arena. But a mistake, and that was a poor error, poor error. They were coming off for him in the first half. Yeah. They made a number of breaks. Nice little tip on play in the first half. That time, it looked like he went forward anyway from Burgess. Fine margins. There is. Fine margins. Briley is coming back on. When he went off, it was 20 points to 10. And he was Sinbin. Ben Thaler is looking at his stopwatch before he lets him back on. Oh, and there's Williams! Williams so again! Williams with a try! He's been outstanding this season! He's been outstanding tonight! And he gets his reward with a brilliant solo try! And Warrington, who trailed by 20 points to 6 at half-time, are now rampant. Well, George Williams just looks electric at the moment in 2023. So much good stuff happening around him. You know, already mentioned there a couple of times that he's managed to come up with try assists with those little neat kicks. 
The Josh Mewlis try, the kick was incredible. The one at the start of the game was just brilliant. But that is just absolute joy and ecstasy for Warrington Wolves. The halfback just straightening it up, seeing the space. Knows Watkins is covering, drops the inside shoulder, gets in between. I think it's Dupree and Watkins. And that is a brilliant halfback try. A halfback that's full of confidence. What a score from George Williams. He's gone through two very, very good defenders there. And George Williams is at his best when he's running. You know, you said, Stuart, that he's had a great year this year. I thought he was really good last year. He was playing behind a team that were having it tough, and they were doing it tough with Daryl Powell, finishing off 11th, started the season off winning the first three. George Williams, I thought, carried the team. He was a, yeah. he was a good player in a... In a poor team. Well, he was playing behind Last a pack yeah. that, that couldn't give him any rock speed, that couldn't Off give him that, any goal To be fair, Kyle, that was just when you were with Warrington. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so true. It's harsh, but fair. It's so true. <laughs> but look what he's playing off now. Ratchford then. Yes! And Ratchford means with that kick, it's a two score game. And that's the error. Bird just trying to put the flat pass. Only 20 out from the line, but look at this, brilliant skill from Williams. What a sight, just dropped the shoulder, didn't he? That yeah. is that is classic, old-fashioned half-back play and a half-back try. And it's a joy to watch, he just steps hard off that left foot and just slices straight through, but Watkins now, this game isn't over yet. Now, from the restart, the short kick-off, Salford have got it back. So from leading 20 points to six at half time, they've conceded 22 of answered points. But they've got a chance now, first real chance to attack. Sneed, they've got to score twice. He was right, right, Brian, he was on the charge. Warrington are offside, but it's another set. Hey, there's still nine minutes to go. This game isn't won or lost just yet. No, yeah, I agree. Warrington, of course, conceded two tries in the final five minutes last week. Will it repeat itself here tonight? Hackers. They go right. Oh, did that come off Clark? It did come off Clark. The referee's blown his whistle. The referee's blown his whistle. The referee has blown his whistle. You can slow up Matt Doffey. No try. I don't think he realises. He doesn't realise that play. <laughs> he does now. He does now. It was good for show, but it doesn't count. Well, he showed us what would have happened if he'd have caught that ball earlier when that chance had gone begging. It's great defence from Darren Clark, just getting up in the face of Brody Croft and dictating to him with his defence rather than the other way around. The pass goes backwards. It's come off Darren Clark. So what uh, Salford will get another opportunity 10 metres out. And, and Warrington have been that dominant in this second half. We, we haven't really talked about Sneed, Croft or Akers, have we? That's how dominant that they have been and were. They've been playing the game and they've just had no opportunity, Salford. Well, they've gone back to doing what they should have done for most of that first half and just carried direct Tez in and around the rook, winning that contest, allowing people like Walker and Clark and George Williams to play off the back of that as well. For first half, they were too lateral. They kept trying to look for that killer pass rather than just the process of working through the middle. Steve Riley. Oh dear, oh dear. Ryan Riley's night of misery may well be completed. Well, Ten right. minutes in the sin bin and Warrington score three tries. Now this. Well, you know that Salford are going to shift it down near the line and through this, he wedges in, he pulls the trigger and he just tries to jam in and forces Briley into throwing that ball. He was searching for Burgess out on the wing. Time again. He just takes that pass on tackle one. Let's go, Tom. He probably only played the ball about four times in that sort of zone this second half. Take the tackle. But he knows, though, ten minutes in the simbin has been really costly, hasn't it, Ryan Briley? There you go. Just to reiterate how dominant Salford were in that first half with those three tries, and they led by 20 points to six at half-time. But then in the second half, a try from Matty Ashton, and then those three tries in the space of nine minutes all scored when Ryan Briley was in the sim bin. 20 points to six down, they now lead by 28 points to 20. It's been a brilliant game. It certainly has. And for Daryl Powell, 
he'll be really pleased because if this game was last season, well, they'd probably lose it by two scores. I think sometimes it doesn't really matter at this stage of the season. You just have to get wins on the board early on. You don't remember these games come sort of August, September time as you're racing towards the grand final. But getting wins on the board, it just does so much in terms of your confidence, your togetherness. Well, here, if, eight point ball game, eight minutes to go. But Salford have been masters of their own downfall. Yeah. In between that 60 and 70 minutes, that's when they conceded three tries, the game went away from them. But Warrington have taken their chances and taken them brilliantly, and Minikin brought down by Lafay, midway inside to Salford Hart. Last one, Drinkwater again goes high, Briley coming in for it. That ball may well have gone forward off. Yeah, I think it's Ryan Briley that knocks it on Ryan first Briley, of all. Yeah, and if that's the case, Warrington are going to get it back. Yeah, good pressure. With a scrum, 20 metres out. Good pressure off Ollie Partington, but, but Ryan Briley. White shirts there, Tez. In his eye line, there's five of them there. Well, he goes for it, but Peter Mataltia makes it into that genuine, genuine contest. When the ball goes in the air, don't just sit back and admire what your teammates done. You've got to put the fullback under some pressure. I think we all asked some questions at, at Warrington, didn't we, at half time and during that first half. Well, they, I think it's fair to say they've given us a few answers. Well, look, if people, you know, if, we, if Warrington think that people are just going to watch them and, and, and get excited about them dominating all year, well, they're not because people are finding joy last year of seeing Warrington where they are, or where they were, sorry, rather. But this crowd here today and Daryl Powell will be certainly delighted. They have answered the questions that we thought about them at half time. They have learned lessons from 2023. Williams, Vaughan on the charge. And you fancy them getting over again here? Well, that would be the game, wouldn't it? Walker. Switching to the right hand side. Well, that may well have come off. Well, Mark Sneed, well, yeah, Mark, it down. Mark Sneed's got to wear two things up there. Do we go for McKayley or do we go for the ball? He's took the ball and I think that's a clever choice from him. There was no way he was going to stop McKayley. If McKayley gets that ball, he goes straight over the top of him. He goes for the intercept, tries to get it, and unfortunately for him, he doesn't come off. Another set of six to Warrington. Is it going to be three out of three for Warrington? The next three games, all in March for Warrington. Hull KR away. Lee at home, Castleford away. They will feel that they're all winnable. Williams now, Minikin. They won their first three matches last season. We all know what happened. Capitulated and finished second bottom. At the moment, they're on course to make it three out of three at the start of 2023. Clark is really through as well. It was Ackers hanging on to his ankles, wasn't it? Little offload and Dufty. Love ball in hand, doesn't he, Dufty? But there was nowhere to go, there was nowhere for him. To find on this right hand side, Minikin at dummy half and drink water. McKayley trying to score tonight. Thomas McKayley. Walker switches it again. Matantia offload, and there is the try. The Matt Dusty, he gets a try eventually, does the fullback. What an offload it was from Matantia. And Jack Smith says it's a try. I think he just wants to double check the ground, just make sure that they were on side. Liam Moore will decide. Tackle five, we've got a try as a live decision. So we're just looking at the ground in and if there's foul play in the process. So the ball's grounded, we're just looking to see if there is foul play on the try score here that would warrant an eight point try. So he's going down to line. Can't see the contact on that one. Yeah, so there is contact by Watkins though. It's just identifying where the contact's made. Yeah, it's, a, it's an open hand. He does make contact to the head. Yeah, so that is foul play. And the try has been scored. 
So it's going to be an eight point try again. Thank you. I made my decision. Well, the decision is, is that an eight point try? Here comes the decision. Was the foul play from Callum Watkins on Matt Duffy? And it is an eight-point try. It's another eight-point try. Liam Moore deciding that there was a sufficient element of foul play in that. And Salford are not happy. I'm not sure about that. What do you think, Carl? What do you think, Terry? Oh, look, Matt Duffy is on his way towards the ground. And you're talking fractions of a second. Callum Watkins is trying to cover hard on the inside. And he does catch him on the head, that has to be said, but I just don't think that that in our game deems a penalty try. I'm not too sure about that. It's just as well it isn't the try that, that ultimately separates the game. It's hard to... In the letter of the law, he does make contact with the head, but I just think in terms of the context of how he's fallen towards the floor, the fact that Watkins is trying to make a cover tackle on his own line, <coughs> but it's deemed an eight-point try. It's all about opinion, isn't it? Stephen yeah. Ratchford at 32 points to 20 will surely make it 34 yes, points mate. to 20. We'll get another kick from in front of the post. Terry, your view. Yeah, do you know what? Like, letter of law, like Carl was saying, that it's an eight point, it's an eight point try, but I think we missed the skill because we're looking at the tackle from. Yeah. From uh, Callum Watkins, we missed the skill from Peter Matalti. What about the offload? Pure Matalti. class, absolutely yeah. brilliant. Like coming at centre, obviously Greg Minikin's playing there. He goes into the back row, flicks that. That that's top draw. That. Yeah. Well, the whole set before it, they started to the field it, on that left hand stick. They moved the ball. They cut back across, and they just they just have so much energy, and that's largely because they've had all the ball. So, 20 points to six down at half time. It's going to be 30 unanswered points with this eight-point try or the second conversion from in front of the post. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Kyle. I thought Duffy was going down. I don't think it was deliberate from Watkins by the letter. It wasn't of the, by the letter of the law. He, he caught him, but I, I, eight-point try. I'm not sure. It's up. It's all about opinion, isn't it? Well, the it's only all opinion about that matters that, is that of the video referee and the referee. That, that's it. Do you know what I mean? Like Matt Duffy knows that. He scored the try that was needed. Was he expecting to get the eight-point try? Probably wasn't. You know, he would have been clipped harder than that in many games that he's played in his career, diving over, diving through knees, going at big fellas, sidestepping, getting a lazy arm. He's got clipped, but do you know what? We've seen them a number of years and a number of times, and it is about opinions. Well, it matters not. I agree with you, Tez. We go back to the skill from Italia. That's what we should be talking about and celebrating. Warrington making a mess of the kickoff, so Salford will get it back, but too little, too late, under two minutes to go. 36 points to 20, 30 unanswered points for Warrington in the second half. So here's a question for you both. Have Salford lost it or have Warrington won it? Well, when Ryan Briley went off, and I'm not just saying that Ryan Briley's cost them the game, but they conceded three tries, they, they couldn't get in the arm wrestle. They were playing all down in front of the own sticks. But you've got to say about this Warrington side, we criticised them at the start of the second half, saying they've missed far too many tackles, they missed 15 tackles. They haven't missed one in this second half. That shows how dominant they have been. Because they haven't had to do too much of it. You know, I just think going back, we said about Salford how they needed a big start to that second half. And I think it was play three or play four. Danny Walker takes off and makes about 15 metres, 20 metres even. And while it doesn't sound an awful lot, the signs were there that Warrington were willing to roll the sleeves up and run harder. So I believe that it's Warrington that have won this game rather than Salford losing it. And you, well, you make a very good point that we were talking, that you mentioned earlier, that we've hardly talked about Sneed and Ackers yeah. and Croft because they just haven't had the ball. No. Um, they're going to try and get a consolation try here. Watkins attempts to get the ball out. It does go backwards. Uh, and it's picked up by Ryan Briley. And it's uh, another set. It came off a Warrington hand. Uh, there's one for you to think about. We've got a minute to go. I'll ask you both in the next 30 seconds or so. Only three games gone. 
can't get carried away. The bird is here looking for well, that was forward, so that's it. The spark, the stop for the concern. And that's what well, it's actually it's obstructing. Hey, are you went gonna round, ask... He went round the back, didn't he? Are you gonna ask the question? Do we think it's Warrington G? I'm not, well, no, I'm gonna ask the question. Do you think Warrington three games in? Do you think Warrington have they shown enough that they're the real deal this year? I always look at Warrington and I'm always impressed with the roster that they've got. They've certainly added some punch in that middle part of the field. And if you've got Clark and you've got Danny Walker playing on the back of you, you've got two class halfbacks, you've got a class fullback, you've got class all over the field. That's what that man Carl Fitzpatrick's put together. He's put together and assembled a really good squad for that man, Darrell Powell. Kyle, look, I certainly think they've improved. And that's all I'll go as far as saying. I think improvement's the key. You know, you look at their roster, they've still got Josh Maguire, Gil Dudson, Joe Philbin, of course, Connor Wrench, a high-quality young player as well. So they've got much more depth and strength. The question is, like you've just said, Pikey, what does it look like in seven, eight games' time? Well, that remains to be seen, but a solid win here tonight. A brilliant performance from George Williams as well. Yeah, well